the Wellness Hour. An in-depth discussion with today's top physicians and medical leaders. And now, your host, Randy Alvarez. You're watching The Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, back pain and neck pain, and relieving those symptoms and getting people pain-free with the use of spinal decompression. With us, we have an expert on the topic, Dr. Pruitt. Dr. Pruitt, welcome to the program. Hey, it's good to see you again. Now, always a pleasure to have you on the program, and uh, especially the interview with uh, manipulation under anesthesia. Very interesting, by the way. <laughs> now, before we get into today's topic, uh, let's talk a little bit about, uh, and for people that don't know who you are, Arizona Back Institute. Well, the Arizona Back Institute is uh, really the premier non-surgical back and neck pain clinic in Arizona. We see patients who really have tried uh, everything uh, under the sun to get results and, and unfortunately are still in pain. And our goal is to get them pain uh, free without drugs or surgery and uh, get them back to their lives. So more and more doctors, medical doctors, are sending you uh, their patients. Every day, once they see the results that we're getting, uh, they send them more and more. Now you say Premier. Why do you say that? Premier Center for Back Pain. Well, you know, obviously I'm a little biased, but at the okay. same time, I, I, I do believe that. I, I try to stay uh, on the cutting edge of back and neck pain treatments. Uh, I do a lot of continuing education, I attend a lot of seminars and uh, conferences, and, and really, I do feel it's the premier facility because, again, we're getting results where other people have failed, and I'm very proud of that. Now, do you really hear that? People that, uh, you know, they think they've tried everything, and they go into you and say, uh, tried everything, I don't, I mean, they come in almost talking themselves out of the fact that it's going to get better? All the time. I mean, we, we have to deal with that on a daily basis. People are very skeptical, but they still obviously are in pain. They're looking for an answer, and so they do want to investigate to see what we're all about, what spinal decompression in particular is all about. So yeah, I mean, people are all the time come in and they, again, they feel like they've tried everything and they don't want surgery. That's usually the biggest thing. They want to avoid back surgery or neck surgery. And so really spinal decompression kind of fills the gap between conservative care and surgery. Okay. And it works. Does it work? Is there science behind it? There and is. How does it work? There is science behind it. And it works in a very, very simple way, really. If you, if you look at the discs in the spine, uh, they don't have a blood supply uh, in, in adults, and essentially they really rely on motion and activity to create a fluid exchange. So when you're moving around during the day, uh, the bones above and below where the blood supply is feed the disc and keep it healthy. Well, over, over time, whether it's with an injury or cumulative trauma like sitting all day, uh, the disc wears out. It gets weaker over time, and it okay. loses its ability to maintain hydration to stay healthy. What spinal decompression does very specifically is we're able to create reproducible negative pressures inside the disc. And those negative pressures create vacuum type effects that draw fluid, nutrition, oxygen, but also help to retract bulging or herniated material. How is it different than traction? Well, that's a great question because everybody assumes it is traction. Is it very big I mean, difference? isn't it traction? Really? It, not, no, it's not, not. Not at all. It looks like traction because you think about it, it's, it the, the mechanics behind it is that it's pulling on the spine. But the difference is this, is that in normal patients and normal people, when the spine is pulled or stretched, there are lots of receptors in those muscles. And those muscles respond to the stretch by contracting. And really, it's a protective mechanism. But with that, you can't get to the disc level. So as the body begins to fight the pull like in traction, there really is only so far you can create you know, any type of decompressive effect on the disc. What spinal decompression does very specifically is it's got a very sophisticated computer system that as it pulls on the spine, it measures and monitors muscle tension and force so that as the body begins to respond by guarding, the machine backs off, readjusts, backs off, readjusts, and over time overcomes the contraction. It's very gentle. But what that does, it creates reproducible negative pressures in the disc. That's where the healing takes place. Okay. Now, when a patient uh, goes in, I mean, what percentage, I should say, of your patients uh, get spinal decompression? Well, one of the things, I mean, we're pretty known for spinal decompression, so a lot okay. of people do. Um, if they have not tried conservative care, and by conservative care I mean physical therapy, chiropractic, um, spinal injections in some cases, um, then really we send them there first. We say, you know what, exhaust those first, then come back. So by the time a person gets to us, they're really either potentially a candidate for decompression or for MUA, which we talked about on another show. Um, so if they do become a patient, a high probability is that yes, they're going to get spinal decompression. And how many treatments? does it take? It really varies. Because of our technology, we can actually focus on one disc at a time. So every patient uh, program is different. It's specifically tailored to that person. So it can be as little as four to five weeks of treatment all the way up to 10 to 15 weeks. It really okay. depends. What are the different categories of the pain patients you see that fit into this spinal decompression? 
Well, spinal decompression is very specifically uh, designed to treat disc injuries, but it also treats facet injuries as well, the joints of the spine. So we can see a patient with a degenerative disc, we can see somebody with a bulging or a herniated disc with an extrusion. Uh, sometimes people with spinal stenosis do, uh, do very well with spinal decompression. So really, there's a very large group of people that can benefit from the technology. Low back pain in particular? Well, low back pain and neck pain. Okay, neck pain too. Neck pain too. How, how, uh, how so? Neck well, pain. same technology. Obviously, uh, the cervical discs are a little bit different in their makeup than the lumbar discs, but the technology works just the same. And in fact, it wasn't up until a few years ago that there was a technology for the neck, and now there is. And we're seeing the same results with the neck pain patients as we did with the back pain patients. Now, when you say you're changing people's lives with this procedure, tell me about that. What do you mean by that? So by the time they come to our office, they're, they're, they're very desperate. I mean, they're, they've potentially lost their job or they're getting ready to lose their job. Their, their family life is in the shambles. They're having difficulty with their wife or their husband. Are they on uh, disability oftentimes many, when they go to you? Many are facing disability. They're trying to avoid it, obviously. But of course, we see lots of patients that are already okay. on disability. Um, for example, you know, patients that we see typically are, I have a patient that comes to mind right now who's a prison guard. And this is a very physical job. You can't be a prison guard and not expect to have some altercations. And he was facing back surgery. That was his only option. His disc herniation was so large that it was either decompression. So herniated disc. Herniated disc. It was either her surgery or spinal decompression. He obviously opted for spinal decompression. How does he hear about this, by the way? Just from ads in the paper? You lecture? What is you it? You know, various ways. Word of mouth, uh, lectures that I, that I give, uh, newspaper, television, things that we do. It, you know, for me, back pain is a very passionate topic. because You like this topic? I do, because we change okay. people's lives every day. And I feel almost an obligation, knowing what I know about our program and what we can offer patients, that I try to get it out every way I can. So a prison guard who obviously can't afford, or not obviously, I'm saying he maybe can't afford to go on disability, doesn't want to go on disability, goes to you mm -hmm. with a herniated disc, like you just said, what's that consultation like? I mean, like, what does he want to know? What are his fears? What are his misconceptions? Well, the fears are obviously, you know, can I work with this condition? If I have surgery, how long am I going to be out? I mean, can I provide for my family? I mean, what are, what are my options here? And so our evaluation process not only goes through their history and those types of things, but we also look at them functionally. We examine them. We look at what's happening. And before I even look at an MRI, I want to know, you know, how their neurological, their orthopedic examination is and what's really happening. We then get an MRI if we don't have one already. And we usually do a, a, a seated MRI or a stand-up MRI. And the reason we do that is because there's much more forces on the spine in a weight-bearing position. So many times somebody will have a condition that doesn't look so bad on a, on a normal MRI and we send them for a standard MRI. Down? Correct. And we okay. send them for a seated MRI or even flexion extension MRI and we can see so many more things. Um, but really the goal for any patient that comes in and one thing I, I really pride our staff in is that we're very thorough. We want to make sure we can help and if we can't we won't accept your case. That's just the way it and is. And they all want the same thing. They want to get better. They, they want, want to be, get out of pain. Yeah, they want to but get okay so back. the prison guard comes in though bulging disc Herniated, extruded disc. Herniated, okay. And, and so at what point do you say this guy would be good for spinal de decompression? Well, once we evaluated him and we, we were very confident, we knew where the problem was, you know, how severe it was. Uh, the MRI I confirmed it, obviously. Um, at problem that point, was where? It was L5-S1 herniation. I mean, it was, that's okay. where it was, on the right side, if, you know, if that Wherever makes sense. Wherever that is, yeah. okay, keep going. In the lower back. Right. Um, but again, his options were surgery, or decompression. And again, decompression is one of those things where once you do decompression, even if you fail, you haven't hurt yourself. You haven't, you, you haven't kept yourself from potential future treatments. And a failure just means they don't get better. They don't get better. They okay. don't get worse though. All that's, right. that's the beauty of it. All right. With surgery, they can get worse. And it's very common for somebody to have So with him, surgery. he has this problem. And what is the spinal decompression going to do that's going to improve the situation? Well, again, I mean, help me understand that part. Sure, sure. What decompression does, again, it's a very gentle treatment where the patient is laying on their back. There's a harness that's hooked to a computer system. And again, the angles vary depending on the disc that we're targeting. But what it does, it distracts the spine very gently. And by doing so, it, it's constantly overcoming the contraction of the muscles. So with him though, I mean, what, what are you doing specifically with him? I mean, in his particular case, what is the spinal decompression doing for it's, him? It's retracting the extrusion and the herniated material away from the nerve root, getting rid of his sciatica and his leg pain. Uh, our program is very, very comprehensive and strengthening as well because if you look at the medical research, and I don't want to get too deep into this, okay. it shows that when somebody has a herniated disc or, or disc injury and inflammation or back pain in general, 
muscle weakness happens very quickly in the spine at the very deepest levels. So you immediately destabilize the back and the spine after an injury, and most people don't address that as part of their ongoing rehabilitation. So most people who have these small flare-ups throughout their lifetime really are setting themselves up for a long-term situation. So with him, really? okay. not only with decompression, we did a very comprehensive deep core strengthening rehabilitation process, and then when they're done with decompression, which he's in now into a second phase, we put them into a strengthening program, and we use equipment called Medex that allows us to strengthen their back in a very controlled environment. So how soon does he feel better? Sure, well in his case, he felt better almost immediately. And, and again, one of the first things I usually see with a patient is they begin sleeping better, and subtle things during the day don't aggravate their back or neck like they used to. But in his case, again, within a, f a few days, he was feeling significant relief. And how does it happen? Well, obviously, as the disc begins to heal, inflammation begins to subside, and function again. So you're allowing fluid to go to the disc you're with decompression? Yeah, you're increasing fluid exchange from the, the bones above and below. That's where the blood supply is. So you're, the disc normally gets hydrated through motion. And most people, for example, with disc pain uh, are worse in the morning. If they have a more degenerative condition, it's usually at the end of the day because as, as the day wears on, you know, the, the spine gets loaded. Uh, but most people with a herniated or bulging disc usually are stiffer in the morning because at nighttime, your body's not compressing the disc. So it swells very passively with fluid. And if you have a disc injury, you're going to be in more pain first thing in the morning. So with decompression, we're creating negative pressures in the disc space that not only fill the disc with, with nutrition and fluid and oxygen, but also helps to retract the bulge or herniation away from the pain-sensitive structures. Okay, so with this particular person, yep. in pain, the scarred, okay, so it allowed the, it, it didn't reduce the inflammation of the bulging disc or, or the herniated disc. What it did is it moved it away from the nerve? Well, again, once a disc is injured and there's inflammation and you're losing fluid exchange, the disc becomes very, very inflamed. It becomes hypoxic. Uh, it just becomes a bad environment for healing. Decompression allows the disc to begin to heal again. Okay, so he feels better, mm -hmm. you're saying. Okay. Uh, I mean, how, how, what, what, what degree of uh, better does he feel? I mean, he goes from being in, in chronic pain to what? Now he's pain free. Really? Now he's pain free. And now we're doing strengthening and rehabilitation to make sure this doesn't come back again because that's right. what the, the research supports. Now, when I see your YouTube videos of people that, uh, you know, one guy comes to mind where, where, where it almost sounds like an exaggeration, but he's not, you can tell that he's not acting, but it's somewhat of a miracle. A guy that was on medications, now he's not on medications. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, is that a common... Uh, common thing that you hear and see in your practice? Every day. I mean, people come to us because they're looking for a solution. If we didn't do our job, then obviously I wouldn't be in business anymore. All right. We're changing people's lives. And part of that, and part of, of fixing their backs or their necks is getting them off drugs, getting them away from invasive things like injections and getting them away from the potential of having neck or back surgery. We're gonna take a quick break. Uh, more about the process, uh, what happens on day one and uh, you know what they feel like afterwards, et cetera, et cetera. You're watching The Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. We're talking about spinal decompression. Does it work? And who's the right candidate? We'll be right back. You're watching The Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, spinal decompression for people with neck pain and back pain. Okay, you know, the big question, I told you when I, when I came on and uh, you know, I've, I've asked around, a lot of people skeptical about spinal decompression. Sure. In fact, doctors, medical doctors will watch this program what do you want them to know about spinal decompression? Well, the spinal decompression works. It's safe, and it really does give the patient an option. You, not everybody has to have back or neck surgery. And if you look at, at, at the, the stat, statistics about back and neck surgery around, they're not that great. And our country spends a lot of money on failing back and neck pain treatments. In fact, a study that I quoted before, which really, I think, shows you how much money we spend is that in a 10-year period, and it's probably even more now because the study ended in 2005, we spent 65% more money, up to like $90 billion a year, on back pain treatments. And the results and the amount of disability from back pain is higher than it was at the start of the study. So I want doctors and, and, and patients alike to know that there are other treatments out there that are very, very effective. And maybe they're not mainstream yet because, again, they don't, they're not profitable like drugs or, or surgery. Because it is a holistic treatment. Well, it's a treatment that's, that's designed with science. And, and I don't like the word holistic per se because okay. it sounds kind of like we're doing things that are, that are not mainstream. But the science of, of disc repair, especially nowadays, really goes along with what exactly spinal decompression does. We're starting to see in animal models and different studies that are coming out in the journal Spine, which is like the gold standard in back and neck pain, is that the disc can heal if it's given the right environment. 
Again, it, it doesn't have a blood supply because it's a weight-bearing structure. If you had arteries and veins in there, they'd be crushed every time you moved around. So there's a diffusion mechanism. And unfortunately, uh, with our society, the way we do things now, sitting at computers and the kind of jobs that we have, our spines are under a lot more stress than they used to be. Okay, well, tell me this then. Uh, you know, you know, I've anticipated this interview. You know, uh, some of uh, the doctors I interview are orthopedic surgeons, mm -hmm. pain management uh, physicians. Orthopedic surgeon, I, you know, I, I, I told him, I said, does this work? He said, yes, but, and the big but is, it can be oversold, overstated. Sure. What is I your agree response to that? Well, I mean, anything can be, really. And when you look at spinal decompression, it, it's a treatment that allows people who in the past maybe not, weren't able to treat real severe back pain get into that game, essentially. And yes, there was some issues with some of the advertising that was done with spinal decompression. It's kind of soured the entire industry. Well, it's not a cure. I mean, a, a fix-all. Not a fix but no. for some people, it is. For many people, is that it true? Is. Yeah. I mean, for some people, I mean, you mentioned a guy, that you know, from pain, and now he's out of pain. You say at the break, you had a person suffering for four years prior to coming to you, and then what happens? Well, they're they're better. I mean, she tried everything. This particular patient you're speaking about, she tried you know drugs and injections, uh, and she had done. She was at her wits' end when she came to see me. She was this, this, this wonderful, bright, you know, vibrant lady who was squashed by her back pain. She was, she was depressed. She, she couldn't keep up with her kids. And, and we've been able to give her her life back. What does she want to know, though? I mean, on that, because this is a very skeptical person, what do they say? I mean, what do they want to know? They want to know how, how it works. Um, will it last? You know, um, is it something I ought to keep coming back for over and over again? And I always tell people, with our program, I don't know about anybody else's. I, I can only talk about my program. But I designed my program so that we really deal with multiple structures in the back at the same time. The disc is usually the, the primary source of pain if you look at the medical research. But as a condition becomes more and more chronic, other structures play, you know, play in that role. Facet joints, SI joints, other, other tissues, muscle weakness is part of it. So with decompression, while yes, it's a big part of our program and really one of the main reasons people come in to see us, it really is a part it's of a, a great combination role. therapy. Absolutely. We well, tell me this though. Uh, you know, you know, my argument, or I guess my big question is, okay, this is a woman, and I'm going to call you on your statements that she tried everything for four years. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, injections, this, that, the other. What did you do that was missed elsewhere? What did you do that was more effective than these other treatments? Well, we treated the source of the problem, which was the disc. I mean. I mean, the disc, how so? I mean, the, the source of the problem is the disc need to be, have more fluid there or what? Well, uh, be, yeah, that's a good question. Up? As a disc gets injured or, or becomes injured, um, it deteriorates, it degenerates. And as I said, you know, when a disc becomes inflamed, you go through these, these cycles of being less pain, you know, having less pain and more pain. As inflammation comes and goes, it changes the surrounding tissues. You get muscle weakness in the spine. The spine becomes less stable. Uh, there's more pressure and force on the joints of the spine. Ligaments get thicker. The body begins to adapt to this whole situation. Thing, you know, traditional physical therapy, uh, injections into the spine for pain relief really don't do a whole lot to address the problem. The problem is you need to fix the disc. Keep, get, get the source Fix of the it issue by. by decompressing it, getting it healthy again, creating, creating the negative pressure, drawing in a bulge or herniation, restoring so the draw, disc's it, function. It pulls it in. It does. It by does. adding fluid to the area. By adding fluid and creating a negative pressure. We're creating, and that's different from traction, how so? Well, a tra traction can't do that. Traction can't oh, overcome the muscle guarding reflex. And that really is why decompression is so much more effective. And, and the unfortunate thing is there's a lot of people out there now that, that claim they do spinal decompression uh, and they have traction tables. And it's really discouraging because people think it is the same, so they'll try that and they don't get better. Decompression is in a class by itself. So with this woman, and, 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 and frankly, uh, you know, I am having a tough time really understanding exactly how this works. But so with this woman, she's suffering for four years. You, 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 you help the disc, nurse the disc, or whatever the term would be. Sure. And... Because of that, the body starts healing itself or healing the disc in, with, with your combination therapies and then the pain goes away? What is it? Well, if the disc is damaged, obviously the body has its own way of, of keeping the disc healthy. And that's through, through fluid exchange and, and as you move around, we call it imbibition. It's a technical term for a fluid exchange that occurs. When you restore that normal balance, when you decrease the herniated or bulging, it's like a surgeon would go in there and cut the material out, correct? He'd cut the herniation out and free up the nerve and do his thing. We do kind of the same thing, but without cutting the patient open. By creating a negative pressure, you're retracting the bulge. Can it last, though, for a while? It lasts very, for a long, long time. Our patients, for the most part, don't have to come back. Well, with this lady that was suffering for four years. 
I mean, what was her pain like before and what was it after? Let me give you a better example, one that we can actually quantify. Okay. I have a patient that came in, he had been suffering from neck pain for over seven years. Uh, again, tried everything, injections, physical therapy, medication, nothing was working. This poor guy couldn't sleep through the night. His shoulder hurt, his neck hurt, waking up throughout the night, his older gentleman. Spinal decompression gave him the ability to sleep through the night and he couldn't be happier. His life has changed. I mean, can you imagine not, not sleeping every well, you're night? you're tired the next day. Oh, not only that, it affects it's everything. bad for your health. I mean, it's... it's, it's your memory, it, everything's not good <laughs> if you don't sleep. Devastating, and it, it changed all that for him. But the part about neck, uh, it, it shows how much I absolutely don't know about spinal decompression. I feel like it's just for the back. How is it affecting the neck? I mean, isn't it really just pulling the lower, or pushing the lower extremities? No, it's an entirely new technology. I okay. mean, there is a, a, a separate and distinct device for the neck as well. Oh, okay. And, and the harness is actually at the base of the skull. It, it, again, it's very gentle. The technology is such that when you look at it, it looks like a, a space age device. It's a very, very complex uh, instrument. And you can see as it's pulling, like you keep asking me about traction. That's a, that's a very common thing people think that it is. If you look at the device during a treatment, what you'll see is you'll see three uh, different screens on the computer. One shows you the ideal curvature of, of the, the pull that the patient should be going under, what the machine is designed to do. The second one shows you what the patient actually is going through as far as their own muscle tension. And the bottom one shows you what the, the deviation that the machine is compensating for. Uh, it's very technically precise. Traction can't do that. And that really is the big difference. So what you're doing, whether it's the back or the neck, you are, you are allowing the body, but you're creating this decompression adds fluid mm -hmm. to the area in the neck. The disc, yes. The disc and... Well, you're allowing the disc to begin to heal. You're, assen you're essentially helping the disc to heal naturally How and How many normally. treatments? Four treatments, six treatments? No, what do you like to do? Typically, for, for me, uh, it's about 20 sessions. That's usually 20, sessions, 20 okay. sessions of decompression for a single disc. If somebody has multiple discs, so they're a very complex case, certainly it'll go up from there. But the goal is to restore function, to get them to a certain functional level before we move them to the second phase of our program, which is a very aggressive I mean, do you rehab. have people that couldn't get in and out of a car or, or, or go upstairs or they had, had trouble whatever, and all of a sudden, I mean, do you ever get total turnarounds? Absolutely. I have patients that come in in walkers and wheelchairs, crutches, you name it. I mean, and, and really? when they leave the office, they don't have to use those anymore. Sounds like an exaggeration, right? It does. It, it does. I mean, is it? <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. Okay. I wouldn't say it if it wasn't And true. the results aren't typical. But it's happened. With spinal decompression, have you had that? Spinal decompression, in my opinion, really, is probably the most important advancement in, in the treatment of back pain to come along. I know there, there, there are surgical techniques and different things that have come along, like the minimally invasive surgery, and those are still surgical techniques. You're taking things out of the body, disc material, bone material. You're destabilizing the spine, and, you're, and you really are setting a patient up for another surgery. Okay. And that's what decompression doesn't do. Its goal is to fix the disc problem. And it works. And it works very well. And there's well. science behind everything you're saying. Absolutely. You know, is. I always tell doctors, uh, you know, off camera, I say, just tell me the truth. That'll be our best show. But everybody comes on here and they don't really want to say it like it is because they don't want to sound like they're selling something. But if you could just tell me, you know, the, 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 I mean, what would you like to say about spinal decompression to back pain patients? Uh, without being in fear of sounding like you're selling something? I mean, is, it, is it just that, that it really does work and that they really do have to try it? It works very well. And, and I really would like to tell people that if you are in a position where you've tried everything and have exhausted things, and again, that's one of my criteria, you have to have failed other treatments before we'll accept your case. If you don't want back surgery, spinal decompression, in my opinion, is the treatment of choice before going into surgery. What doesn't it work for? It doesn't work for patients who have uh, severe bony stenosis. It doesn't work for patients that, that are severely uh, destabilized. They have like what's called a spondylolisthesis or an anterior slippage of the vertebrae. Uh, it doesn't help for people who are, uh, have other medical problems. People that are very poor healers have severe, severe uncontrolled diabetes or thyroid conditions. I mean, there certainly are limitations and there's certain things that we look for right off the bat that disqualifies a patient. Spinal cancer, obviously, abdominal aortic aneurysm, things like that. But it's very safe and it's very gentle. I treated a patient uh, last year 94 year old lady who um, did fantastic. <laughs> really? Yeah, my oldest patient ever. Were you afraid to put her in this? You know what? I wasn't just cause, because of my experience. I've been doing it for, since 1997. Um, she did fantastic. And that, what does that mean, fantastic? She did fantastic. She was able to, we talk about, I mean, turning your head is a big deal. Now she can turn her head normally. She goes to Hawaii uh, every year for half the year. Um, she was considering stopping those, those, those yearly vacations and spending time over there because the traveling was getting too much for her. And she was able to go again this year. 
and live normal. I mean, at 94, you can imagine there's some limitations in your health. You certainly, if you're still mentally viable, pain certainly shouldn't be the thing limiting you at, at that age. And in her case, it was. Can they go to your website to learn more? We're out of time. Of course. They could, le- they could learn more on your website. Final more. message to somebody, and you say that, you know what, and this is what I like about you. You know what I mean? Because you're, you know, you, off camera, I mean, you're serious about this stuff, but you think that there's thousands of people in your town in Arizona that are suffering that don't have to be. I think there's thousands of people around the country that are suffering that shouldn't be suffering. Uh, I think decompression should be, and if I have a time for just a quick story, I'll yeah. tell you very briefly. Yeah. Years ago, when I first got into doing decompression, back around 2000, 2001, I actually called a major insurance company, and everybody would recognize them, I guarantee. I don't want to say their name. I talked to the medical director there, and I asked him a very simple question. I said, send every patient that you have to me who is scheduled for back surgery, not recommended, but scheduled for back surgery, for decompression. If we can't help them avoid back surgery, you don't pay me a dime. If they, we can't help them avoid back surgery, here's the, what it will cost. Okay. They went to a board meeting two weeks later, came back, and declined my offer. So yeah. that's how serious I am about it. In all it. fairness, for certain people, back surgery works as well. It does. It does for some people. Okay. But by and large, Because you're not here to people. try to bad mouth. Because I want to make sure people just tuning in. This is not about bad mouthing, you know, back surgeries or what the local hospitals are doing or things like that. But you're saying that those things, uh, that, I mean, you want to catch people earlier. That you say that the spinal decompression, unlike those things, and I'm, and I'm paraphrasing what I think sure. you're saying, helps uh, repair the disc naturally. Is that, is that correct? Exactly. Exactly. And again, you're right. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, you know, bad mouthing surgery by any means. But there are a but very before surgery at least try this. Absolutely. Okay. What, it's, it's, it's not going to hurt message. you. Exactly. It's not going to hurt you to try it. And and, and a proven track record. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of scientific literature behind this. And there's more and more every day. I mean, spinal decompression. Yep. And make sure it's the real spinal decompression. Correct. Not just traction. Exactly. All right. I think we learned a few things today. I want to thank you for coming on the show. Always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you. You've been watching the Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. If you would like to know more about spinal decompression or if you would like to see this interview again online, you can visit our website at wellnesshour.com. Point a friend in this direction and just put in spinal decompression or Dr. Pruitt. For now, I wish you good health. Thanks for watching the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez the authority on health issues.